All right. We are live. So thanks for uh, coming, everybody that came tonight. And then this is going to go on our Facebook page. And uh, thanks for JP. So for those of you who do not know JP, I've been working with JP. Man, how long have we been working together, buddy? It's been a long time. Like seven years now. I think so. Wow. Yeah, time goes already. fast. Yeah. You crazy. Had kids. I had like four kids. All right. So <laughs> JP is a chiropractor. And we're going to explain and get into kind of what that means uh, because this whole idea and the reason why we're doing this is we don't feel like people have a really good understanding of what physical therapy is and what chiropractic is now if you've been to us before you have a good idea because you've actually experienced it but there's a lot of people out there that have never experienced it don't have it or they've they've been to physical therapy they didn't think it was so great or maybe they went to chiropractic they didn't think it was so great so they've just kind of bucketed us into you know i don't know i don't know about that stuff it's just kind of um weird so uh we're going to explain how, our thoughts on physical therapy and chiropractic and uh, hopefully educate some people on uh what we do so what is physical therapy i i talk about this all the time so I teach uh, in uh, universities. Uh, I teach students that rotate through. I teach um, our clinicians, obviously. It's really kind of what I've transitioned to. I don't treat as much anymore as I used to, um, but I, I do a lot of teaching. And one of the first things, no matter what person I'm talking to, is, that I'll ask them is, you know, what is physical therapy? And actually, PT students sometimes don't do such a great job of explaining it. But um, what I, can't see I think of when I think of physical therapy, we're going to talk about what most people think of is, oh, you guys do like massage, or I think you got like that ultrasound thing, or like electric stim and hot packs, and they they always see like those things, and I'm like, wow, that is not okay. That's in there sometimes with some of it, but that's not what we do, and it gets kind of frustrating. So we need to do a better job on the education front. But the the biggest difference between and physical therapy, just like chiropractic. Just like any profession, you know, a real estate agent, you know, there's really good of those. And sometimes there's like mediocre middle of the road. And sometimes there's really bad ones. That's in every industry, pretty much, even though we are sanctioned and we have to pass board exams, there is still really mediocre physical therapist and really good physical therapist. What we really tried to pride ourselves on is we have physical therapists that really care about the profession, care about people and care about improving uh, as individual clinicians. And if you can find those kinds of people, then it, I, I think that works out really well. So uh, JP, when people think about chiropractic care, like if you asked uh, people, um, hey, mm -hmm. what is chiropractic? Um, what are common uh, answers you get to that question? It's funny, you kind of answer the question yourself, like the, the, the PT and the answer that people think of PT is the same thing people think of chiropractic most of the time. It's like, oh, I need a massage or like, I need, I need a quick, I need a quick crack in my neck or something like that. Like I'll get that a lot when I'm around. Um, but again, like the, the biggest thing at this point is like, I mean, it's the same, same exact thing. It's like, ultimately it's a surface understanding and it's down to the professions to, to do a better job at increasing the standards. And that's what we thrive to do. Uh, at uh, the office, uh, Premier Chiropractic. So again, like a, what, what we, what what it is ultimately is structural correction, neurospinal correction. We want to make sure the spine is as solid as a, a, a good, strong foundation of a house, so that it can hold a building upright, hold a building long and tall for for and functional for a long, long time. So that's my uh, at this point, like that's what I wish chiropractic care would be associated to right away. Um, and then again, hence the, the focus on neurospinal correction and neurospinal mm -hmm. chiropractic, um, just making sure we depart from uh, care that's just based off of pain. And then we can go a little bit more de uh, deeper than that, a little bit more long lasting, longer lasting than that. Hi, kid. Hi, John. <laughs> so that's, All uh, right. that's basically where we're at here. Yep. Very, yeah. very, very similar to what you said. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, I'm going to call the audience here. Cindy, I see you are uh, unmuted. So I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. So okay. Um, what percentage of spine pain, so either neck or low back, when that person, when you have like neck or low back pain, very common that you go to your primary care physician. When you go to the primary care physician, what percentage of the people that go in that have neck and back pain do you think end up getting directed to physical therapy or chiropractic? I think um, probably 90%. 90%. Yeah. Uh, it's 8%. So 8%, eight. eight, that's yeah, eight, <laughs> not 18, not 80. Eight. Oh my goodness. Right. So if they're, if they're, if they're not getting told to go to chiropractic physical therapy, what do you think they're getting told? Take pills. 
Exactly. Right. So now some of that, we're, we're not going to hear uh, bash our physicians. I love physicians, especially my <laughs> primary care physicians, man, you want to talk about a tough job. I don't know if there's a tougher job on the planet than that. You've got to know a little bit about everything. So in defense, when we go out and talk to our docs and we say, Hey, what's going on? It's kind of slow. I haven't seen anything from you. Did I do anything to upset you? He goes, no, 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 not, nothing to upset you. As I give people options, I say, you've got back pain. What you really need is to get this thing fixed. And how you get that fixed is you go to, to physical therapy. So that's an option, right? Go to physical therapy. Oh, how long is that going to take? Well, you know, it's going to take probably six to eight weeks, a couple times yeah. a week. And you, you got to go there for like an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what you're signing up for. So, well, what are the other options? Well, I give this <laughs> pill, right? I give you a pill, you eat that, and then the pain goes away. Well, that, that's a pretty low investment, right? A, well, I could do an injection. Like if I do the injections, it'll help out with the pain. It won't necessarily fix the problem, but I could just do it. It'll take like two minutes. So part of that is it, it is a time commitment. So to, to fix something um, and, and to really help people for what we do, there's very few cases. JP's a little bit better than me, but there's very few cases where it's going to take like two or three visits. It happens occasionally. But I mean, you're looking at a longer commitment. I mean, our average length of stay is somewhere around 15 visits. That's an mm -hmm. average. You know, some people have really bad injuries, takes longer. Some people are done, you know, in a couple of visits. But for the most part, it's it's quite a commitment. I think that's part of the problem. People don't want to commit for that amount of time if they don't know if it's going to work. And maybe they haven't heard like great results with physical therapy. A lot of people that come to us and come to JP come because one of our patients came to us and they said, oh, my goodness, you hurt your back. You really got to check these guys out. That, that's how that works. But if you don't know anything about chiropractic and physical therapy, then the options when you go to your doctor, sometimes it's just easier to take the pill. But we're going to talk a little bit about why that might not or be. they send you for an x-ray. Or, yeah, or diagnostic yeah. testing, right? So what mm -hmm. happens when they send you for diagnostic testing? And, and JP will agree with me here. But I've never gotten radiologic findings or an MRI back, and it said, looks great. I've, I've never gotten it, right? So there's always going to be something <laughs> Doesn't on happen there. often. No. Yeah. So if there's always going to be something on there. And then you get into the psychology. It's, oh, my goodness. There, there, I've got arthritis or yep. I've got a herniated or, or bulging disc or I've got right. degenerative disc disease. Like There's all these structural things that are going wrong. And that just kind of adds out. Oh, the doctor gets it back. Okay, now we need to send you out to ortho because you need we need to know if you're a surgical candidate, which a tiny percentage of people that have back pain become surgical candidates. We're talking like less than three percent of people are actual surgical candidates. Things that should be um, handled, you know, normal back pain the, the way that we handle is the way that it goes. But yeah, that, that's a really good point. So uh, I often talk about this. If I could rename physical therapist, because I think when people think of physical therapist, um, they usually associate it with like the hospital or uh, something that in, the, in my area of outpatient physical therapy, it's, it's really not. So if I could rename it, I would rename it movement coach because that's a better description of really what we do. So I am really good and physical therapists are really good at watching somebody move and figuring out what's going wrong. So this is gonna sound really creepy, but like a really fun day for a physical therapist is to sit at the airport and just watch people walk by. Wow. And just kind of see, see how they move. It's like, oh my goodness, that guy had a hip replacement probably within like the last four years. And oh, that guy's had back pain uh, <laughs> since he was a kid. And oh, this guy, he sprained his ankle when he was, you know, doing oh, athletics in high school. Head. Like we really like to do that stuff. So, but it's because that's what we're really good at. If you come into my office and you have a really bad flesh wound, like you're in the wrong place, I can't help you. If you come in my office and you have a rash, like I'm not going to help you. But if you come in my office and you're not moving properly and that's causing pain, like you're in the right place. So that's all we do. That's all we specialize in when it comes to, you know, our, our human movement. So I asked JP this earlier today. I said, if you could rename chiropractic, what would you call it? So talk about that, JP. So neurospinal correction, um, j just because, like I said, assume chiropractic itself and the same thing with these like physical therapies, like not, they're not like bad words or anything like that. It's just like they're associated with something in people's minds. And, and once you say chiropractic, it's like, I just, I just want to, I like to redefine a little bit and get going. It's like, Hey, you know what really, really about neurospinal correction. So again, like the, the spinal relationship with the nervous system, if there's, if everything is properly aligned, properly stacked, this the weight is distributed properly on the joint surfaces ultimately that's a lot better a lot less mental load and a lot less irritation on the automatic operating system or the nervous system and that's really ultimately like the the biggest the biggest goal at this point and guess what pain goes away when the nervous system processes things properly pain goes away when movement is happening properly right travis yeah. and again once that is done ultimately you pack it up you build up a, a strong foundation of musculature around it of proper movement patterns 
And uh, man, you you got this. You, that, that's ultimately the, the the biggest thing. So no, it's not just about manipulations or quick cracks. It's about specific corrections to the spine. And as you gotta say, I, I really stress that finding or that that definition of my patients when we meet the first time. Um, in our consultations, like it's an objective diagnosis. It's not just about finding the pain area. If you find, if you just go after the pain area, you're missing the whole state. You're, you're missing the the, the you miss the whole picture, right, Travis? So it's like a, a hip pain can be caused by knee, ankle, even the neck position from time to time. So we gotta we gotta find out objectively what's going on. Huge things starting starting at, at the examination. Really, like that's where. That's really what's going to be the launching pad for good care after that. So making sure it's objective, objective, objective with technology, not just where the pain is, not just like, oh, does that hurt here? Okay, that's where we're going to treat. No, 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 that's that's not good. We got to we got to go further than that. And again, ultimately, once the diagnosis is done, you want to correct, correct, correct. Go specifically, uh, making sure those those weaknesses, those shifts in the joint surfaces and the joints are, are addressed so that the, the spine can, st can stand tall and strong. And then ultimately, like I mentioned earlier for better functioning of the nerve system, just because it's a lot less irritation. All, everything that we do, our mental processes, and ultimately if there's something slowing you down in your movement pattern, well, guess what? You're thinking about it, it's not good. It stresses you out on a physical, on a, on a mental basis, but on a physical basis, it, it, it makes sure that you have a lot of compensations and those compensations, they can derail everything. It's a nice little downward spiral. So really objective diagnosis and correction. Um, correction, I mean, we're, 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 we're structural correctors. Yeah. So I think, you know, both of us see a lot of second and third and fourth opinion stuff. Yeah, so we absolutely. see patients that come in and, you know, if we get uh, sent by the doctor, you know, they say, Hey, you got to go to uh, Travis, go see him. And it's like, nah, I've been to physical therapy before this stuff doesn't work. And so when they're in front of us, say, okay. So, and you have to have an open mind when you walk into that situation, I say, well, what did you do in physical therapy before? And I said, I've had this hip pain, the outside of my hip. I've gone to like three bouts of physical therapy. It helps, like it feels a bit better, but then it just keeps coming back. And I was like, okay, well, did they look at your back or did they look at your posture? Did they look at, you know, what's going on in your foot and ankle and how your foot is hitting the ground? And I said, like, no, they just kind of focused on like my hip and like just that one area. And, you know, it's, it's not that hard to get rid of pain. It's a little bit harder to set up a person for success to make sure that it doesn't come back and get them to understand why that pain got there to begin with. So again, more common thoughts about why you would go to a physical therapist. So what most people think is like, oh, therapy or rehabilitation, like you must have had some really bad injury, right? So you must have been into a car accident or you had surgery and that's why you need physical therapy. When in reality, very few of our patients have trauma. You know what the number one thing that patient comes in when they're seeing us for the first time is I've got whatever body part pain and I have no idea why it's there. I don't rem I got up one day and I just started having pain. It doesn't make any sense. And then we'll go, well, was there any kind of new activity that you did or any change in the volume of the activity that you do? And a lot of times I'll say, no, I, I've been doing the same thing for 20 years. I'm a carpenter and I've been swinging a hammer for 20 years. And now all of a sudden I got pain in the outside of my elbow. It doesn't make any sense. So it's kind of going into and saying, okay, you know, why, why is that happening? Why would this person have pain after doing the same thing for 20 years? And now all of a sudden they have it that doesn't make any sense. And just kind of going into looking at a lot of times the nervous system and the spine and how that is putting pressure on the nervous system and how that can be causing issues. So somebody what was asking me recently, um, what, what causes that? And like, I, I'm not somebody who does repetitive movements whatsoever. I'm not somebody who does this. I'm somebody who does that. I'm 55. And when I was about 13, I got you know, this, this, and that when I was, I got thrown in the air in cheer practice and then fell, didn't think twice about it, walked away, no problem. But then now it feels like I have issues also. Um, ultimately, like there's, uh, there's also that whole thing. It's like, it starts in the youth sometime somewhere in first place. Uh, we're so young, everything kind of, we're, we're able to work around it, but we never really re get re-educated. And then that's, that's really where it, de it degenerates all the way through. So um, like you, like you said, it's it's not just about the trauma. It's not just about the pre or post surgery. Um, it could be a long time process. So even if there's not a specific trauma or a specific repetitive movements in your mind, um, it's, it's a good it's a good idea to get, at least get screened, right? Yeah, yeah. So what I would love to see physical therapy turn into, and what I'll be working on for the next forty years or so. I got four kids, so I'm not gonna stop working anytime soon. So. <laughs> What, what I want is I want us to be focused on longevity. And th this kind of goes obviously very well with chiropractic and, and the conversations I've had with JP, it's, it's like, it's maintenance. It's not, you don't just, you know, when 
you take your car in because it's making some really weird noise and it, it won't go as fast as you want it to go, that becomes like, that's like a trauma. That's fine. You need to go in for that. But what if you had just gone in for regular maintenance to make sure that everything was running okay, even when it's, it's not, you know, screaming at you or the engine light is coming on. So for, for us, I really think about, I'm trying to turn physical therapy into the dentistry field. So I love my dentist too. It's not to it had nothing to do with ripping on dentists, but you go to your dentist once or twice a year, no matter what, right? You, it's not like you go there only when you have pain. Now, when you have pain, yeah, you're going to call up your dentist and try to find out what's going on. But you, you go there for normal maintenance. And that, for whatever reason, that's just like a normal thing. That, that, that's super common. Why are you going to your chiropractor or your physical therapist at least every six months to get things checked out to make sure that there's not some disastrous thing going on? That's why you go for regular maintenance for your teeth, right? So they can, oh man, looks like it's starting to get a little bit of a cavity here. If I fix this now, it won't turn into a root canal. Well, that's what we do all the time. We're trying mm -hmm. to prevent huge injuries by just doing some maintenance type stuff and, you know, for your teeth, guess what? If your teeth don't work, I can rip them all out and give you dentures. You'll be fine. But if your <laughs> spine doesn't work, I, I can't rip your spine out and give you a new one. So why are you not going in to get regular maintenance for your body? Like this is the, you only get one of these things. And I, if, if your teeth wear out, you can get new teeth. I mean, just wear dentures, right? Like, like that, that's possible. But your, your spine and certain parts of your body, there, there's at some point, and we try, you know, we never think that we can't help somebody. J, JP and I are always like, it doesn't matter what, where you start at, we can make some kind of improvement to help you out. But at some point it becomes really difficult. Like mm -hmm. if, you, if you're not doing some kind of regular maintenance and it becomes really difficult. So let's talk about chiropractic. This should be pretty straightforward. So when most people think about chiropractor and JP already talked about it, um, you know, neck pain, back pain, headaches, that's the big things that you go to chiropractor for, right, JP? Absolutely. I mean, that's the most common thing. So typically it's like, <sighs> There's, there's like a couple of folds to this question. So like, what is the common thought when you go to guy It's like, when I can't deal with my pain anymore, I've tried this, I've tried that. I've gone to my primary medication hasn't worked um, or injections, or I don't want injections, or I don't want surgery, or I've been to another chiropractor. I've been doing some stretches at home. I've been doing this. So like, that's, that's why I see people come through my office and again, re referrals from other people, co-management, that's where we're really going. Uh, but if you think of like, oh, why well, should go to a chiropractor? Well, I'm not hurt right now, so I'm not going to go, right? Um, yeah, I mean, going back to your dentist point, um, vanity is my answer, actually. Um, we, we, we all want a beautiful smile. We all want white, shining uh, chiclets, like they call them up in my neck of the woods in Canada, uh, <laughs> teeth. <laughs> um, but ultimately, the, the idea is like we want it to look good. And um, if, I had, if I had my advice say in it at, at any point in time, like anybody that has some type of like this going on that's a sign even if there's no pain whatsoever if there's any anterior head syndrome or position of the spine that's kind of like you know not like pleasant looking or anything like that that's already a symptom of a neck instability that's been happening for at least seven to ten years so what we're looking at this point is like it's a, a little bit more prevalent so that's, that's really like the where we're looking for longevity and whatnot giving signs to people to what, what to look for um, when we're moving, when we're, when we're interacting, like what, what should be corrected before it becomes painful. So that would be why, sh why should somebody go to a chiropractor at least get checked, like you said, have good movement patterns going on, make sure that they're set up for the next months ahead for their work, for their, for their activities, for what they enjoy and love doing, make sure that's foundation. Again, the spine is a foundation of the body's properly positioned and functioning. And ultimately catch those things early, catch that early degeneration, that, that early decay, catch that early anterior head syndrome, that position of, of, of the head, like way in front of the shoulders or um, away from the torso, away from the trunk. Those things are just good things to look for. Um, but yeah, typically it's people that have been in pain for months, um, not, not because they want their heads back and their, their, to look good ultimately. Yeah. So it, it is what it is. We still get the we still we still get to help those people, which is good. And, but again, sometimes I'm like, man, if I had seen you five years ago, ahead, if I had seen you twenty years ago, it would have been well, twenty years ago. I was still uh, in high school, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but the the idea is, um, yeah, just just early, uh, early, early, prevent to not uh, to not uh, prevent to not have to to fix really. Yeah, yeah. So. We're talking about normal checkups and just kind of regular visits to your physical therapist and your, and your chiropractor. So uh, next Tuesday, we're doing a free screen event. 
So um, for those of you that are listening, we've done these before in the past where you can come in and get a free screen. I can't make this any easier for you. It's free. Okay. So you come in, you get a 30 minute appointment with one of our PTs and you just get checked out. And this isn't necessary. If you're having pain, then yeah, you're really going to benefit from this. But I would encourage you if, if you're not having any pain and you just want to make sure that you don't have it in the future. I mean, that unfortunately is really what motivates people, right? So mm -hmm. even if they know they're not in good shape or they know they, they mostly they can't do things they used to do. So especially in our aging population, it's, you tend to narrow your activity. It's like, well, you know, the, the number one thing is I moved from a two story house to a one story house. Right? And it's like, well, I just don't want to do stairs anymore. That's not something that I'm interested in doing. And that is like one of the worst strategies you can take because stairs is an excellent exercise for your lower extremities. So you just start to kind of narrow your activity and then you don't do as much. Maybe you're not in pain, but you're just noticing that you're not doing things that you used to do as easily as you used to do them. And then that becomes an issue. So if you want to get things like that checked out, then all you got to do is call 610-841-3555. And we still have a couple spots available for that. So today is Thursday. I have it next Tuesday. So if you're interested in that, um, let us know. And actually, if you come in on that day, then we're doing some discounts on our wellness stuff. So uh, massage, nutrition, and our laser treatments and a couple other things that we're, we're doing just to try to get some awareness around, hey, get stuff checked out and small problems that are happening now don't turn into big problems in the future. So JP, if someone wanted to see you, then how does that work? So it works. It's, it works the same for everybody. Um, ultimately, we, we always start with a, a conversation, not a commitment. It's a complimentary consultation every time making sure we're a good fit for the people that come to see us, but make sure that they're a good case for us as well. Not everything is a chiropractic case. Not everything is a, a, is a PT case. Not everything is an ortho case. Not everything is, you get the idea. So we want to make sure we talk, 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 and we always, always, always start before committing to anything, uh, before we even go to an examination. We don't want to waste resources. We don't want to waste time or people's time and resources. So we want to make sure we qualify people before we even move ahead with all of that. So that's the best place to start with me at this point. Um, also, um, at this point, like what we can do as well is like, we, we can always start giving some exercises, giving some recommendations, going and sending people over for your screenings as well. Um, that's, that's been, people have been responding really well for that. Like, uh, I think some, somebody in the attendance, Laura, um, is asking about like any, any exercises chiropractors recommend between sessions, um, between or even before, sometimes it's a good idea. Uh, but absolutely, there are, there are, they are. It's all personalized as much as I can do it. But guess what? Hey, the, the physical therapist is a lot more in depth with that as well. They can spend a lot more time uh, and have a nice magnifying glass on all your movement patterns while you're in session. Especially that's why that's why everybody loves you guys at, at, at Robbins. You're <laughs> you're actually one on one, <laughs> so it makes a big difference for people and it helps. But um, yeah, in between, in between, before. Um, we're, we're, we're all, we're all doing this at this point. Movement, movement needs to happen. But if you are interested in chiropractic, it starts uh, with us with Carolina Constitution. Yeah. So do we have any questions from anybody that is with us right now? You have the, the two, the best physical therapist, and the best chiropractor in entirely High Valley. And you can ask them any question you want. That's Anything? Funny, Come on. Cindy, you got a question? Well, I have a problem with my SI joint. Mm -hmm. And um, my question is, I don't know how to keep it in place. Okay. JP, what would you say to someone that said that? Uh, there's a few reasons why. So, I mean, there's a, there's about on the surface, there's about three categories into where like uh, sacroiliac instability, uh, SI, SI is sacroiliac. So the, the, what people refer to like as their, their hip joints, it's really like the base of their low backs, not the, the, the hip area, but sacroiliac area. There's about three categories. One is, again, uh, an actual restriction in movement. The other one can be an actual instability, too much movement. Um, so that needs to be diagnosed properly. That needs to be looked at properly. Um, either way, there's always a good, there's always a good need and, and very good answers for stabiliz stabilization and strengthening musc the musculature around the spine and the hips, all the way down to the ankle sometimes, uh, depending on the uh, the, depending on the problems. And then again, I guess that's where the, the screenings with uh, Robbins work really well, but ultimately like identifying what type of category the sacroiliac lesion lies in is the first step at this time. And again, there's about, hold up a second, one, two, three. I, if, I, if I really look at it on the surface, there's about 40 different options in terms of misalignment, at least that can happen in sacroiliac with the dynamics of the hips, the knees and the lumbar spine, at least 48. Um, there's, there's a little bit more than that, but that, that needs to be, uh, that needs to be looked at on a, on a deeper diagnostic basis. And then, like I said, 
regardless of what it is, um, strengthening, stable, stabilizing, strengthening, making sure we get some, some more muscular flexibility in there is absolutely key. Does that make sense? Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. How about when it hurts mostly if you sleep on it, on the side? When you're laying on the side. So that's yeah. a, actually, it's funny because it's a typical problem with pregnant women as well, which, which we see quite a bit of that. With the what? With pregnancy. what women? Oh. Yeah, the, there's a lot of relaxing. So the joints are a lot looser to make more room for baby in the pelvis and uh, to prepare for birth. So ultimately it starts hurting women a lot right around, like it depends on how unstable the pelvis was before pregnancy. But if it hurts at night with that pressure, that gravity, um, either, either it's kind of like compressing on it or like it's the hip that you're kind of lay, laying on. That's yeah. those, are two different, those are two different situations altogether. All, all um, but again, like it, it could be most of it, what I'm going to be looking at now, it's like more of a sign of instability for the joints, but I'll also be like, mm, that muscle is mad. It's absolutely mad. It's not getting fed properly. There's a big, there's a big need for perfusion or blood flow. So that's where the strengthening comes in. Mm, okay. Thank you. Anything to add, Travis? No, I think that covers it. That's um, yeah. I, I guess the only thing I would add is, like strength solves a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So if you Absolutely. can just get stronger, you know, when I'm having a patient, I'm not getting where I want to get to. And sometimes I overthink stuff. I'm like, Oh man, this could be a nerve entrapment. This could be um, some kind of postural thing or is a joint thing going on. Sometimes if you just get stronger, like it solves a lot of problems. So when I'm stuck, I just make you straight bar deadlift and see how much you can do one rep max. Right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, strength is really important. Mm -hmm. uh, in the chat here, JP, had someone that asked, uh, hey, you know, what do you tell to uh, patients that say uh, they've gone to their doctor maybe and, oh, you have all this back pain because you need to lose weight and that's, that's going to be the solution. What do you say to that? I hate that question. <laughs> I, 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 I love that question, but I hate that answer from doctors. I mean, again, they're doing their best. Don't get me wrong. It's like they have so many people that see in like about 10 minutes to do so. So ultimately, like it's the... I'm going to give you like the, the, the all encompassing answer to the question uh, as far as what they, they think it is. So I mean, honestly, like it's, 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 it's it, there's, it's a lot more nuance than that, obviously. Um, but it, you know, what's funny is that like ultimately weight itself doesn't matter. The biggest, the, the, the one thing, the biggest, the biggest thing in terms of that is still how the joint surfaces line on top of each other. That's one, one and only the, the, the main reason why, Either people with disc herniation and I've had degeneration in their spine, they're still going to do well with chiropractic and, and physical therapy as if those joints are moving properly and properly loaded. If it's unevenly loaded and it's unstable, then it's still, it's going to hurt. The cartilage is going to be inflamed. The joints are going to get inflamed. It is the same thing for people regardless of weight. Now, here we're talking about weight. And if, if, if people are like, hey, you have to lose weight and then everything, all your pain is going to go away. Well, well, no, because guess what? I see people from 100 pounds. I see teenagers. I see kids. I see people that like are very fit all together. They're all muscular and still things are still painful. So what do you say to those people? Um, the, the, the biggest thing is absolutely the foundational structure. The, the biggest thing is neurospinal integrity. Um, num number one, biomechanics, biomechanics, biomechanics. Now with weight itself, um, sure, adipose tissue or fat tissue releases inflammation compounds that are not released with people that is the same weight, but muscular. So there is a little bit of complications there, but hey, guess what? If the joint is actually moving uh, on, a, on a good basis, it's probably not even gonna, it's probably not even gonna matter at that point. Now, does that mean that you should not like do what you think or what do, do what is good for your body and make sure you, you take care of your diet and nutrition and movement? Sure. Um, but in, ter in terms of that being a solution, eh, I don't know. I, I, I've always told my patients that is like, I, I just think you got dismissed there. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? If you want to unmute, you can ask us questions. Hmm. Joe, you're going to ask a question. Yeah. I got a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. You sound great, man. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, three years ago, I had a ruptured, disc L4, L5, and um, it was pretty bad. So uh, long story short, I had back surgery, okay, with a neurosurgeon, and um, everything was fine for a while. Then three months ago, I hurt my back again, mm, and 
I had, uh, I was starting to get back spasms and that concerned me because the last time I ruptured my disc, I had back spasms, I could hardly move. And it was almost like the same feeling. So um, I wanted to get it checked out. So I had an, another MRI done and um, it, it wasn't a ruptured disc, but um, now instead of the L4, L5, I uh, have some issues with the L5 and S1. There could be a minor uh, herniation, okay, is, is what the doctor said. Now, I guess my question is, I don't want to go through another back surgery. And um, I don't know if Travis, if you remember, like when I saw you like two years ago or so, um, when I had the back surgery and then I started reading more after the back surgery, and I think maybe you told me or I read it somewhere that a person who has back surgery versus somebody who does not, the first maybe year or two, that person with the back surgery, his back feels better than the person without. But after two years, yeah. it's almost like equal. The person who didn't have back surgery almost feels the same as a person who had back surgery. And uh, if I would have read that beforehand, maybe I would have never had the back surgery. But, you know, that's the way it is. But uh, I guess uh, to get to a question, I don't want to have another ruptured disc. So what can a chiropractor do to alleviate another ruptured disc versus physical therapy, which I did go, uh, I went to like 10 sessions with uh, Katie Ross and she's really good and she really helped me out a lot. But uh, that's the key. What can I do or who can I go to or what is my best alternative? So I don't want another full blown ruptured disc. Okay, um, that's there's quite a few questions over there, but we're gonna try to address them as much as we can, Joe. Um, basically, there's no predicting. I mean, ruptured discs will happen depending on movements and whatnot. And again, you could be in a bad situation like me a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I was doing some some logging in my house, and sure enough, I pick up something that's heavy, and I don't drop it properly, and sh and boom. Um, my bag just seizes up and then I'm on the ground and I'm missing work the next day. <laughs> so um, the, the chiropractor had a broken back. How, how crazy is that? And I'm, I'm 29. So that's, that's, uh, that's basically what it is. So preventing things like this and kind of guaranteeing it's never going to happen. It's, it's, uh, we, we can't do that, obviously. Now, the, the biggest thing that we need to talk about ruptured discs and disc degeneration in and of itself. If I was to pick out about 10 people off the streets and MRI them, no matter what, about seven eight of them asymptomatic. So that means they have no pain whatsoever. You probably find a disc bulge. You probably find some arthritis. You probably find some um, uh, uh, disc herniation in there. Um, but again, remember, they're not symptomatic whatsoever. So the fact that like disc herniations cause pain, it's not a correlation. It's not automatic. Um, so that, that's, that's also a big thing. And we, we mentioned this over with the, um, the question of the weight um, people that are that, that people that are told that they're too big and that's why they're hurting, that's why they're in pain, that's why their backs is back, that their backs are bad. Um, ultimately, like that doesn't answer. It's so nuanced in terms of back pain. Is like, it's it's probably the single best biggest mystery in medicine in medicine at this point. <laughs> like, what what causes back pain and what doesn't? Um, there's a lot of factors, but primarily normal movement patterns is your best guess in terms of preventing what that uh, the next herniation or something like that, making sure, number one, that your core is strong, engaging properly, that your glutes are good. Um, and that's ultimately what, what Katie, what Travis and Emily will, will, have, you, will have you do and work on. Um, but also at, the, at this point, and we're going to go address another question that's in chat right now. Um, are there any benefits in combining PT and chiro? Well, again, if the joint surfaces are not moving on top of each other and are not properly positioned on top of each other, uh, juxtaposed, right? They're not perfectly in line or as close to, to normal as possible. We're not, we're not trying, to op trying to optimize not to be like perfect at this point. Um, ultimately, you're not going to get as much out of your exercises. You're not going to get as much out of your, out of your PT. So it, it, it is important to combine both. And guess what? It actually costs people less money to do both. And it actually costs people less time to do both. And research is all about that. Um, combining chiropractic and PT together make a big, 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 big difference. I said, ultimately, with somebody like you, we're, we're talking, we're having this conversation together in the office. 
Um, I, I'm not going to just say, hey, all you need is chiropractic at this point. No way. You're, you're, you're most likely going to go back to PT. You're going to go back to Katie and Travis. Um, just because while we're addressing that structural component of the spine, we need your brain, we need your muscles to get accustomed to that new position very fast. And that's ultimately a matter of coordination, a matter of strength, a matter of uh, juxtaposition, right? Alignment. Um, so so that there's a lot of factors that go into play to make sure that your discs won't be fragile or um, prone to injury. That's basically the best thing. I mean, there's nothing guaranteed in life, um, but all we can do is really pre like prevent as much as we can um, or protect as much as we can. So. Yeah, uh, JP, I I'm apprehensive because since I had my back surgery, I had a microdisectomy where they trimmed right. out uh, the ruptured part. Um, so if I go to a chiropractor and mm -hmm. then he doesn't crack your back, they manipulate your back, whatever, you know, <laughs> it's almost like I'm thinking, okay, can he like, you know, do more damage after that surgical repair disc or, oh, or not? That's a good question. Um, I will say, I will say knowing people's surgical history is important. And the, the, the one thing that we think about in chiropractic is violent, aggressive manipulations, right? That's, that's another big, big misconception in the profession. I have about 18 to 20 different ways to address people. And again, from newborns all the way down to people that are 97 years old to 100 years old. And it's funny because you address a newborn almost the same as you would address somebody that's 97, like very, very light pressure, not even a thrust, not even an adjustment, just pressure makes a big difference that way will sustain hold almost like as if you would check like the ripeness of an avocado, you know what I'm saying? So like it could be that light um, and it doesn't have to be like wretched people like pretzels, you know, that's uh, you see, you see videos on YouTube a lot where like the neck goes one way, then it goes the other. And then like, here goes the spine and like the hips are, are kind of flailing back and forth. And um, no, this is not how it's done. This is not how everybody does it. And neurospinal correction, neurospinal chiropractic is very, very, very aware of those different patients' needs. The same way the, 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 the exercises are personalized at Robbins, the same way a normal, a good physical therapist will personalize your exercises. So um, if people are apprehensive, then that's my, that's my answer, ultimately. Like there's, there's tons of ways that we can go. It doesn't have to be high force and violence. It can be very low force. And sometimes people get off the table, like, did you even do anything? And I'm like, see you in two days. And then two days later, like, oh my goodness, I cannot even, I can't believe like that just what you did the other day actually made sense, actually is working. So microdistectomy, spinal fusions, we're looking in terms of like those things that come through the door from, from time to time does not mean that you're not a candidate for chiropractic. You just need to be careful about it and consider that. And that's the thing, the other thing too, why like, the, there's only 8% of people referring to chiropractic PTs right away is this most, most primary doctors don't know that like there's a lot of options in terms of chiropractic here. So again, th those things we can discuss uh, a little bit more at length, Joe, if you, if you wanna, if you wanna ever hop on a call with me or something like that, I'd be happy to. Okay, thank you. No problem. All right, guys, we gotta put kids to bed. JP's got younger kids than I do. How old are your kids now, JP? My three-year-old was knocking on the door earlier. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> my, my six-month-old, uh, he's gonna be seven-month-old actually, not too long. He's, he's, he's growing big and, and big and fast. It's absolutely crazy. So yeah, <laughs> so it's bedtime right now and that's why she's knocking on the door, I think. But it's, uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. And, uh, again, I'm, I'm glad people are asking questions and looking to better their lives. It's, it's, it's why we do what we do. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to put in the chat below. Um, so while well, you guys are on Zoom, people are watching on Facebook, we'll put in the comments below the easiest way to contact us. Um, if you want to go and see JP, obviously, I uh, encourage that. I always hate when uh, people, think, oh, chiropractors and physical therapists, like they, they don't like each other, right? Like I go to a chiropractor. So and, and JP goes to physical therapy if he needs it. And at the, the last thing I'll say about Joe is your body's probably just going to need some, some maintenance, like what we've talked about. So JP, he's a chiropractor. He knows exactly what to do. He hurt his back. I have two herniated discs in my lumbar spine from when I was playing football in college. Guess what? Every once in a while, I do something dumb and I throw out my back. And I'm lucky enough to work at a physical therapy clinic and Katie cleans mm -hmm. me up. And then I go to JP and it's, you know, it's, but it's, it's really crazy how quickly you can go from like what seems like a debilitating injury. So JP was like on the ground and can't, it's hurt his back so bad he couldn't go to work. But yeah. if you know what you're doing, 
it's not such a, you know, you're not signing up for a long-term like debilitating type injury. And a lot of the times, like we said, a very small percentage of people actually get surgery when they have back pain. If you, if you know what you're doing, um, most back pain uh, can get fixed pretty quickly if um, you fix the things that we talked about today. So JP, thanks for coming on. Uh, Tell Jan, I said, hi, I haven't seen her in a long time, but tell her I said, hi. Yeah, I will actually. She'll be happy to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. Great questions. Great chat, man. Seriously. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. All right, guys. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you.